We're in week two of a series, How to Pray. If you missed week one, you can uh, catch it online or um, might be CDs back there. As we, um, well, before we get started in the message, uh, just a couple things. Uh, there's announcements in here. We ask everybody, uh, you know, take a look at it. There's top five things going on, opportunities. We ask everybody to fill this section out every week and drop that in the offering basket when that comes along. There's also a notes page in here. You could turn to that. It has the uh, scripture on it and a place to write down some thoughts um, along the way this morning. And uh, if you didn't get a flower, if you're here and you're a female, then we have those for you. Pick one of those up. And lastly, I, I hope everybody got a stone. Did everybody get a stone? Our elders had implemented a new um, personnel thing to see how well the pastor does each week. If you like the sermon at the end, you keep it. Not, you know... We're going to fire those up here. Now, now, come on. Let me just ask, how many of you thought about that already? Because a number of people said, what are we going to do, throw these out? Yeah, you guys are a sick bunch. I mean, this isn't safe place. <laughs> All right. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your presence here and your love for us and uh, the opportunity we have to gather um, together and to gather together with you as our loving Father who... Um, called us and given us life and receives us afresh every moment of every day with mercy and grace. Um, So we come before you now and ask that you would move uh, in this place, move in us individually and together as your church, um, speaking words of life and truth. And may we be open and receive them uh, as your word, living, vital, transforming in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. All right, um, we're in uh, this study in Matthew chapter 5, and we're looking at uh, each week uh, a segment of the Lord's Prayer, and it's a prayer likely familiar to uh, most of you, uh, and a lot of you have learned this over the years, you could say it like that, right? In fact, you have said it, and uh, you could say it a hundred times over. Some of you here this morning have probably said this, uh, these verses in this prayer uh, thousands of times over the course of your life. But uh, the danger always with that in, in church world is that we say those things, but we don't take time to, to go deeply into them. So this series is uh, to help us go a little bit deeper into what Jesus taught us and what he meant by it. Um, so uh, Jesus taught a lot about prayer, and he had some very specific things to say about praying. And uh, some of those things, if we listen to them rightly, are counter to some of the things we thought we knew about prayer, we thought Jesus said about it, uh, and so we, we looked at it. In fact, if you understand that Jesus, when he was asked by the disciples to teach us to pray, actually took time to do that, the implication is that, you know, we might not be always praying rightly, or we could be praying incompletely, and so that may explain some things about the uh, um, less of an impact in our prayer life. Um, Jesus... Um, When he was asked, teach us how to pray, he didn't say, well, you don't need to be taught how to do that. Just do it. You know, just talk to the Father. You're all good. Um, He didn't say, um, uh, you know, all prayers are the same and, you know, God hears all that and all prayers are acceptable. In fact, he uh, was asked that question and he deliberately took time to uh, specifically teach about how to pray. And, And the reason the disciples asked that was because they noticed that when Jesus prayed and how Jesus prayed, it was different than their experience. Uh, They noticed that it was part of the rhythm of his life. Scripture tells us that Jesus would get up early in the morning and go off and be himself, be by himself and and meet with his father. And he would come back and then he'd have like the agenda for the day or or before a lot of the major events that we celebrate and go, wow. If you read the scriptures, you find that Jesus, you know, spent time with his father before that. And so the disciples noticed that and and they caught that. And they understood, you know, if they connected the dots that Jesus' prayer life and Jesus' life were inseparable. You know, they flowed out of each other, and uh, they also understood that um, this, you know, because when they finally came and asked them, if, if Jesus could teach us to pray the way that he prays, then we could live the way that he lives. And so that's the key, and they got that. Um, so, in this series, a couple questions I try to answer each week is, what did Jesus mean when he said the things he said? Um, and then how exactly can that help us pray the way he prayed or the way he taught us to pray? And last week we talked about that relation. We are to pray relationally, that the word Jesus uses when he says our Father is uh, 
our Abba, our Daddy. And so we are to come, uh, not as beggars, not as servants, but uh, loved sons and daughters. We, are, we come before God. You know, and you may think of that for a moment. Really think about that. Because this is the one who created all things. This is the one who sits and reigns forever uh, and is leading all of history to his designed end. Uh, he is able to do all things, uh, you know, and he invites us to come. And if we're going to pray to him rightly, we come to him as Abba, you know, Daddy. That relational component uh, is essential uh, to our prayer life. Because the truth is, and that is a big deal, because the truth is, if we don't understand that relationship rightly, and if we don't enter into it as God designed it to be, we will never fully live out the kingdom call he has in our life. We'll never experience inside the love and the grace that allows us to do that. We will never gain the confidence uh, about uh, our Heavenly Father and, and his uh, watching over us and his guidance for us to the point where we will trust him in a fallen and broken world very far, okay? So that relational component is essential in our prayer life. And it is a big deal. Um, and that's really one of the reasons why I have this stone. So if you have your little stone, everybody get one? Anybody need one? All right, I think we're good. All right, uh, I want to share a, a story with you. It's a, actually a British um, reality show called Monastery. Anybody ever see it or hear of it? It was actually, there's a Benedictine monastery, and they, they asked five guys to join this monastic group for 40 days. And then they filmed it, a kind of reality show. Uh, and and the, thing, the conditions were they didn't have to believe what these Benedictine monks uh, believed. They didn't have to be Christians or Christ followers, even care about any of that stuff. So they took five guys, brought them in, but they had to agree to the routine and pattern of life. So if they were willing to do that, they were in. And so they filmed this, and so they had all these routines of prayer and eating together and you know, you know, silent time alone and over 40 days. There's one guy that was part of this group in the reality show, and his name was Tony. And you can see in the, in the course of the movie that you know, this is really uh, impacting him in some critical ways. And now Tony's background uh, was such that he, he was in the movie industry, but not the kind you want your kids, to, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, that was his, his background. That's where he's coming from. So he's here, and this stuff is starting to happen to him, and it's getting time for them to uh, go home. And um, you know, he was wrestling with some feelings about who he was and all those kind of stuff. And as was coming to a, a conclusion... Tony spends time with one of the Benedictine brothers whose name was uh, Francis, and he shares his fears with him. He talks to him about his life, and, you know, he, he's worried that, you know, this incredible experience, which was so rich for him, uh, was such that, you know, when he walked out the door, went back to his normal life, it would, like, it would be like a, a dream, like it never happened, right? And so he's worried about that. Uh, but he also said to um, this Benedictine brother, he said, uh, you know, I'm not going to quit my job. Uh, and he said, I'm not going you know, to go and sit in some church pew every day, and I'm not going to read my Bible all the time uh, and all that kind of stuff. He said, I need to live. I need to keep my lifestyle. Uh, but he said, but I'm a little bit worried that when I leave, this stuff is going to fade away. Um, and uh, the Francis, the Benedictine monk, uh, is with him. He um, says, this whole time and what we do here, it's about discovering who you really are, and through that, maybe discovering uh, what you are here in, in this world to do. And uh, he said, that's what we're trying to do. And, uh, you know, he said, that he said, I have something for you. And he handed him a stone, a white stone. And he uh, told him, you know, the Bible says about us in Revelation chapter 2 that our Heavenly Father uh, has a, a unique name for his sons and daughters, unique to each one. And it's written on a white stone. And he said, you know, your Heavenly Father has a name he wants to give you. And if you lean into that and trust in that, you know, he's going to show you who you are. And, and he said, you know, until you know who you are, you'll never live the life you're meant to live. And so, um, you know, he gives him that stone, and, and Tony's just, you know, bawling and broken up by the whole thing, and the cameras follow him out. The commentator on the show says this, I believe Brother Francis speaks to the heart of a fatherless generation. There are this, these are the sons and daughters who don't know their true name. Confused about who they really are, in their search, they bring their quest for identity to anyone who will listen. They are willing to look anywhere to find it. And I would just suggest to you out of last week, and I think it's important for the bridge into this week and what lies ahead for you, that um, the only place you can ever really find out who you are is here, through the one who created you. And the way you find that out is when you enter into that relationship, uh, not as kind of God as a concept or an idea or a being way out there, but God is your Abba, your daddy, your father who loves you and loves to see you 
and loves to see you live the life that you are created to live. So, um, you know, hang on to this uh, and carry it around here. Maybe it'll, it'll help in the days ahead, and I'm gonna refer back to it here in a few minutes. So last week, we talked about praying relationally, our Father, all right, uh, who, who is in heaven. And so this week, the theme is we are to pray tangibly. We are to come before God's throne and, and pray um, tangibly. So let's look at the scripture. Do we have the slide? I'm gonna invite you all again to let's say this all together, all right? This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father, there we go, be your name. Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. Okay, that's the prayer. And I want to focus today on uh, the section about what it means to pray tangibly. And that's uh, after the first clause. It's, you know, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And um, to pray that prayer meaningfully, rightfully, uh, is to pray for, you know, it's tangible. Lord, your kingdom come. Your will be done. Uh, You know, let things as they are in heaven be done here. Uh, And I think in church world, sometimes we get this messed up. That sometimes uh, we understand those, but conceptually we, we misunderstand them. We understand it. There's this place. It's, it's heaven. It's out there. And then let me just kind of create it this way. Uh, it's praying about a kingdom, okay? the kingdom of heaven. And that is the place. And I love the scripture. It says, the throne of righteousness th- surrounds the throne of God. I love that scripture. But what that means is around the th- throne of God, when God's reign is, is, uh, um, is happening, everything is as it should be. And so we pray, you know, this, and, but in church where we understand, oh, yeah, that's heaven. And we, but we think of it this way. That's a place that it's out there and God lives there and someday I'm going to be there too, which is true partly, not completely. Because what we pray in the Lord's prayer is, hey, God, the way it is in heaven, the, the way things are when they are the way you want them, we want to pray that that comes to be where we live that the way things are up there come down here, okay? That the way things are in heaven becomes the reality of what's going on in earth. And um, we, are, we are part of that. And, uh, you know, I, I love, uh, I think it's Annie Dillard, what she said. She said, Jesus made a dazzling display of his Father's love. And, and what that means, you know, he, he, when the disciples saw Jesus and the people around him said, this guy lives differently, I mean, that's why they asked him to pray. How do you do what you do? I mean, how do you even think of what you do? And, and basically, Jesus uh, you know, would say, well, I've been sent, not just to tell you about the kingdom, but to bring the kingdom here and make it accessible to you. So the way I live and the way I think and what I do and you know, the love and the relationship and you know, the, the focus and purpose you see in me, you can have that too, but not just for you, either, you know, alone, but it's so that you as well. Remember, Jesus says, the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. And so we have this privilege and this call. And when we pray this prayer, which we call the Lord's Prayer, that we'll never pray that rightly until we understand that, that that is part of the purpose. And that is what we're asking. And not just asking God to do it, but asking God to do it in us and through us in a fallen, broken, messy world. Father, your kingdom come. Your will be done. Your name be honored and made holy. You know, here in this messy, broken up place that in which we live called earth, okay? We are sent. And so you have these two kingdoms, right? And uh, again, you won't venture very far into that until you understand and have experienced the, the love and the depth and the richness of the Father's heart for you. Because that kingdom, to become visible in this kingdom, doesn't come easy, does it? it, it it's contested. And uh, we have to fight for for it. Not only that, we, you, will, you will discover, if you pray that prayer rightly, Father, your kingdom come, you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If you pray that and not just pray it, but enter into it, the, the end result of that is it's going to drive you back relationally regularly because you're going to discover you can't do that on your own. You can't do the kingdom on, uh, on earth as it is in heaven in your marriage or in your friendship or in your job very well, very long without God's help and support and power and strength. Okay? So, but that's what we do. Um, and, uh, but so often, our prayer life, we skip over that part. We go right to the daily bread thing, right? 
okay, God, you know, yeah, kingdom stuff, all right, but here's what I need. But, you know, those, those are meant to be connected. God's provision comes to us as we pour ourselves into his purposes. And his purpose for us is to allow, to understand his heart, to understand his kingdom, and bring what is invisible to most people visible in a fallen and broken world. So I've got a couple images to maybe to help you understand this. First one is, uh, there it is, okay? Now that is a car that's been neglected, right? It's been around, kind of beat up. I love those before and after shows, you know, the kind of restoration thing. Uh, so, but here's the next one. How about that, huh? Same car, same deal, right? You know, and, and when we pray, Father, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I mean, there are parts of our lives that have been neglected, Right? There's stuff in our lives that are getting kind of rusty and broken down and, uh, you know, uh, falling apart. But when we pray this prayer, Father, your kingdom come, your will be done. Well, we're saying, okay, those places that are all messy and broken and rusted, let's get it the way it was meant to be, right? And that's when you, when you engage in that. You know, people who like working on cars, they, they, they see that and they imagine that. And then they finally get that and they say, that's the way that car was meant to be. You know, and that's that restoration work. So here's another one, Okay. That, that's a hoarder place, right? Um, anybody have clutter in your lives? Huh? Anybody have clutter in your heart? Yeah, a little bit. All right, so now here, here's the next one. Yeah, same room, right? A little bit of effort, a little bit of energy. It's like, wow, is that the same place? And so, and so when we pray, your kingdom come, your will be done. You know, there are places that are in our lives, they're all cluttered up, they're all messy. There's junk in there that's rotten, there's junk in there that doesn't belong, there's stuff in there that maybe isn't bad, but it's in the way, and it's limiting the kingdom of life. And so when we pray this prayer rightly, it's, Lord, okay, let's take a walk. I want my, the, you know, the realm of my life and where I live and where I walk uh, to look the way you want it to. That means there's probably some stuff that needs cleaned up. There's probably some stuff that needs to be tossed out. There's some stuff that just needs to be put away and stored because it's in the way. Hmm? Again, I got one more. Before picture, after. <laughs> yeah. You can do whatever you want with that one, all right? <laughs> thy kingdom come, right? The cow wasn't praying, thy will be done, right? That, that's, all right, we're done with that one. But, um, <laughs> But see, when we pray that your kingdom come, your will be done on earth is heaven, we are giving ourselves over to God to engage in that work. Jesus came, he says, I have been sent, not to tell you about the kingdom, not just to paint pictures, and not just to live a life that you go, wow, I have been sent so that you can enter into the richness of the kingdom in a fallen world. And that operates for us, and that when we pray this prayer rightly, that we engage that, we don't just pray it. And uh, let me just kind of engage it with you in concentric circles. Because the first place the kingdom must come, if it's going to come and become visible to the world, must be inside. When we pray that prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done, your name be made holy, we've got to start inside. And the truth is, you know, when we start this journey, there are places, you know, we just travel back from Nashville and we hit places in the road with a lot of these things. You know, it's like, you can't go on that lane. That lane's closed, right? And sometimes in our relationship with God, you know, we, we're like, God, let's, let's go, I'm ready, but not down that lane. No, 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 I'm not going down that lane. That's closed off, right? You can't enter that place. Uh, or, you know, maybe, um, we got here, the road closed, right? And, you know, we, so, okay, God, I want your will, I want your kingdom, but, you know, this road, you're not, no, you can't go down there, right? So uh, we wrestle through that thing. Maybe, maybe there's, a, there's an attitude kind of thing, right? Anybody see that one? Like, you know, <laughs> don't turn there. And if we're, gonna, if we're gonna pray that prayer meaningfully, your will be done, uh, you know, on earth as in heaven, then we've gotta stop saying to God, you know, I'm okay with this, you need to be okay with that. Maybe God wants to say, if that kingdom is gonna come, if you're gonna experience the richness of fullness, there's some things that, you know, you just gotta stop turning down that road, Right? Or maybe we have that sign up and say, God, you know, it's my, my financial life or it's my relational life, God, and all the rest of it, your kingdom come. But nope, God, there's a big circle with a line to it, and we're not going there. So everywhere else, your kingdom, but not there. You see how that works? It starts inside. The kingdom of God, Jesus says, is in you, in you. But it must be pressed into us and, and you know, increase within us. And so that's part of that prayer, and we give ourselves to that when we pray that prayer. Then let's uh, then move out from there. What about uh, our relational worlds, okay? You know, uh, our, our whatever, marriages, our friendships, you know, 
uh, or, or our relationship with God's people, the family of God, the church. Sometimes we put up stop signs, say, yeah, yeah I love this stuff and I love you, but you know what, there's a limit that, I, that I'm gonna follow you. Uh, you know, we're gonna reach this point, then I, you know, that's enough, I'm good with that, God. Uh, so we have those kind of limitations or uh, sometimes, you know, maybe you can't see that over there, this is a no outlet sign. And we'll have this thing in our lives, this relationship in our lives, and we'll say, God, I've tried to fix that a million times. It's a dead end. I am not going down there, but maybe God's saying, no, I wanna bring my kingdom there alive. I got some fresh stuff to apply to that area, and it can become a thriving place. And so when we pray, Lord, uh, your kingdom come, your will be done, it is, it is in, in partnership with him to bring that kingdom that is invisible, but is the way things are meant to be visible through our partnership with God. And it starts on the inside, then it goes to the outside. You know, again, friendships. What do your friendships look like, right? What do you, what do you um, and then go outside that. What about your workplace or your neighborhood, all right? When it comes to praying that prayer, uh, your kingdom come, your way done, God doesn't, it's the whole globe. God has a global and vision and one that spans all of time. And when we pray that prayer, we're saying, I'm in. God, what you want, the way you want them, that's what I want too. Your will be done. Honor be given to your name. And so often when we do that, uh, you know, we're gonna find kingdom conflict. Sometimes that conflict is right in our own hearts, right in our own thinking, right in our own willingness to trust or surrender. Sometimes it's in, you know, the way our culture does things and what our society says is okay or most important versus what God says. Jesus said this, right? Seek first. What's it say? the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all that other stuff gets added, right? And so he's saying, you know, this is, this is a priority. And when we pray this prayer, we're saying, God, what you want, I want. The way you want it, I want it. Your will be done, not mine. Hmm? And, you know, when we pray that, that's, uh, we're engaging in that with him. So, um, it's some other things, but I want to show you, uh, you know, there's, there's a video here. How many remember um, uh, Karate Kid, the original version? Mr. Miyagi, everybody see that? Oh, this is, this is him. Do we have that? Let's, let's show that first. Listen to the dialogue. Hey. Oh, Mr. Miyagi, I forgot to give this back to you last night. Uh, you keep. Oh, thanks a lot. Sir, ready? Well, yeah, I guess so. I must talk. Walk on the road. Hmm? Walk right side, safe. Walk left side, safe. Walk middle, sooner or later, get the squish, just like grip. Here, karate, same thing. Either you karate do yes, or karate do no. You karate do guess so, just like grip. Understand? Yeah, I understand. Now ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Yes. Let's make sacred pact. I promise teach karate. That to my part. You promise learn. I say you do. No question. That to your part. Steel. Steel. Yes. First wash all the car, then wax. Wax. Oh, what do I have to wash all the car? Remember, dear, no question. Yeah, but I... Right. <laughs> wax on, right hand. Wax off, left hand. Wax on, wax off. Breathe. In through nose, out the mouth. Wax on, wax off. Don't forget to breathe. Very important. Wax on, okay. <laughs> wax off. Wax on, wax off. You know, and, and if you, and again, I don't want to demean or compare completely, but you just think about that, you know, and here's Miyagi, he's got this young kid says, show me karate, I want to be karate. I mean, the disciples are saying, looking at Jesus and saying, show us how to live the way you live. 
Show us the kingdom thing, you know? How do we get in on that? How do we do that? And Jesus says, you want to know? Okay, I'll show you. He says, you know, like going down the highway, right side, okay, left side, okay. If you try to go the middle road, right, like a bug or grape, you get squashed, right? So often, uh, we, we don't experience the fullness of the kingdom uh, life in our lives. We don't experience the, the true and genuine power of prayer because we try to live middle of the road kingdom life, right? My kingdom, your kingdom. Let me decide, God. But Miyagi has it right. He says, here's the deal. I will teach you. I'll do my part. But what I say, you do. Right? And I love the image. And he says, right? You got that? Right, right. And he reaches down. And he drops a sponge in his hand. And he says, wash cars. You know, he's like, what, what? He's like, right, right. Right? Remember the deal? And when you say, God, your kingdom come. I want your kingdom come. I want your will be done. I want your name to be honored. You know, God, <laughs> He bends down, he pulls up a slopping wet rag, and oftentimes he'll flop in our hands and says, go wash that person's feet. Go serve somebody. And we're like, what, 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 what? Kingdom life. The Father's will be done. His name be honored. His reign put in place. And we get to be a part of that. Hmm? Your kingdom come, you'll be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, um, got some things for you to do in the coming week. Um, and hang on to that stone as you go through these things. First of all, I'm, you know, I, last week I asked everybody to read this scripture, the Lord's Prayer, three times a day. Uh, I don't know how many of you have been doing that. I hope you're doing that. And again, it's not just to make it road. It's just so that you can begin to enter in. But I, and I hopefully, as we go through each week, you're beginning to hear it differently. Now when you pray, your, your will be done, right? On earth as it is in heaven, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take on a whole new meaning because you know, you can't pray that prayer rightly and shut off, you know, portions of your life and kingdom from God's coming reign and love, okay? And so you pray that. So continue to do that. Continue to focus on the relationship. And I'm going to ask you to do this this week in whatever form and order you would like. When you leave here today, and again, this is the next step thing is take a walk, okay? When you leave here today, sometimes, maybe, maybe on your way home when you get home, Take a walk through your house and pray that tangible kingdom prayer. Father, in this house, in everything that happens in here, in the people who live in it, the people who pass through it, your will be done, your kingdom come, here in this house as, as it is in heaven. And then maybe uh, take a walk through your neighborhood. Just prayer walk and say, God, there's people out here who have no idea how much they matter to you. And, you know, I want them to know the richness of your blessing. So, Father, in this neighborhood, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and use me in that however you want to use me, right? You have sent me here the way you sent Jesus to bring that about. And maybe it's in your workplace this week. When you show up on the job, you walk around the office, you walk around the job site, you look at the people you work with, and you say, Father, your will be done. Here in this place, the way it is in heaven. All right? Begin to do that, and... Uh, you know, we begin not to just know the prayer, but enter into the fullness of life. And that's the privilege we have as sons and daughters of God. So we're going to close service this way. Uh, uh, we want to not just give you ideas, but tangible ways to grow in this. And those are a couple of them. Continue to pray the prayer, but do the walks during the week. Also, uh, during the end of the service and from the last song, there's some people that are going to be up here to pray with you if you would like that. If there's an area of your life, so the intercessors, if you would come up. Uh, someone on that side, someone on that side would be great. If there's an area in your life where you are just having this kingdom wrestling job, right? You're doing the middle of the road thing or you're doing God no entry kind of thing and you just want, you don't have to explain it. You can just say whatever and, uh, you know, maybe there's some renovation work, some clutter to clean up. Just give a word, give an idea and these people will agree with you in prayer uh, and, uh, you know, God works through that as well, okay?